Join me, friends and gamers, as we take a look at the drama surrounding Ernest Gary Gygax and his recent reacquisition and relaunch of the TSR label. Greetings and salutations, friends and gamers of all stripes. My name is GM Dave, and I am your man behind the screen. So what is going on with TSR? Well, putting aside the fact that we've got two different TSRs in existence at the same time right now due to some weird situation with copyright and licensing that I'm not going to get into because, frankly, I don't really understand it all that well. Let's just say that there's a bit of drama happening once again in the world of tabletop gaming thanks to the label coming back into the spotlight and coming into the hands of none other than Gary Gygax's son, Ernie, who now is going by E. Gary Gygax Jr., something that he apparently never did before, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Before we get started though, a quick announcement, I just want to remind everyone here, make sure to open up that description box down below and follow me over on Minds.com. It is the best backup channel that I've got available, the best place to follow me outside of YouTube, particularly since all of my videos are uploaded there as well. And with that said and out of the way, let's get into it. So, what is going on with TSR? There's a whole lot of drama going on on the internet about this property coming back at the moment, about the supposed resurrection of TSR, the supposed return of TSR as a new gaming company. And naturally, as this sort of thing always tends to be, it's largely happening on Twitter, and it's largely falling into two major camps, the pro-TSR and anti-TSR camp. And I'm sure you all can guess who largely comprises the anti-TSR camp. The same types of people that comprise the anti-anything old-school camp, the anti-any-kind-of-old-school gaming camp, the Woke Skulls. And what is going on with them? What are they doing? Are they just engaging in the typical, we hate this, we're gonna rage on it, this is problematic, that's problematic, you're evil, you're evil, cancel, cancel, cancel? Yes, and no. But before I get into the drama itself, the reasons I think it's happening, what exactly about it strikes me as so unusual, let's put in the necessary context. So about a week ago, an announcement came out that TSR was back. Gary Gygax Jr. got his hands on the license and the copyright for the company, although weirdly there's also somebody else who holds the license for TSR. That part of it, I really don't know about, like I mentioned at the start of the video. It's some complicated issue between licensing and copywriting that I don't fully understand. I just know that in the interview that I listened to, Gary mentioned that the guy holding the license apparently is something of a friend and a fan, so they're allowing him to hold the license. I don't know if that is still the case, because I've heard that apparently there's a whole new hubbub surrounding that, but I'm not going to touch on that side of it, because quite honestly, that's above my understanding. However, that aforementioned interview I am going to touch on, because that's really where this whirlwind of drama truly got started. So about a week ago, Gary, or really I guess I should actually be calling him Ernie, but now he's calling himself Gary Guy Guys Jr. For sake of simplicity, from here on out, we're just going to call him Junior. About a week ago, Junior joined the Sci-Fi For Me TV YouTube channel in a special episode of their Live From The Bunker podcast. Now, for clarification, I've never listened to this podcast before this episode. I specifically chose to listen to this particular podcast so I could get the source information that I heard and saw was being used against Junior and TSR based on things he said in the podcast. And, by and large, it was a pretty uneventful podcast. He talks about how he started gaming with his dad, he talks about the legacy of D&D and the TSR label, he talks about why they brought it back, and generally just talks about what his plans and the plans of those working with him are for the label and the company going forward. 
However, at about 20 minutes into the show, Junior and the host are talking about TSR's history in terms of Dungeons and Dragons, how D&D moved from TSR to Wizards of the Coast, and basically how TSR went under. And one brief point that I want to mention that a lot of people have been getting incorrect on this is a lot of people are saying that TSR went under because Wizards of the Coast took them over. It's about how Wizards of the Coast acquired it, and it's about the dirty things they did, but that's incorrect, at least according to what Junior states which I'm going to paraphrase because really it was a whole like five minute segment and I'm not gonna put the entire thing in here. Basically, Junior states that the reason why TSR ultimately went under and ultimately went to Wizards of the Coast is because they were having licensing issues from when his dad was trying to sell the license off to different companies. That led to some problems where people were trying to snipe the license and this and that. So they hired on legal representation who then apparently ended up giving the rights to herself, or at least attempting to, to sell them off, and that's where the problem started. The Wizards of the Coast team, apparently they were approached by Wizards of the Coast in an effort to save the D&D brand, because whoever it was that was either in charge of Wizards of the Coast, or at least putting forward this idea and approaching Gygax with this, was a big fan of D&D. They enjoyed the property, they wanted to preserve it, they wanted to help it move forward, and apparently that actually went over pretty smoothly and was a you know good, friendly acquisition at the time. At least, again, according to Junior. And it was at the end of this segment where he was discussing the attempted hostile takeover of TSR and then the eventual movement of the TSR brand, the D&D property, and all of that into Wizards of the Coast, that Junior made the couple of statements that earned him and the TSR brand a lot of flack before it then blew up even bigger when they were kind of engaging with the whole thing on Twitter. The first of which was an arguably apt but certainly not tactful comparison to the attempted hostile takeover of the TSR brand and products by this outside lawyer with the violent ways that ancient Native American tribes would take over and integrate smaller tribes. And the second statement was a pretty innocuous one where he was just stating that, hey, you know, recently TSR and a lot of old school gamers and stuff have been dissed for being, you know, old fashioned and not with modern trends and anti-gender identity for some reason. And naturally, these statements led to that usual crowd pointing fingers, calling him bad names, saying that all these statements are proof of just how terrible a person you are and how terrible all old school gamers are, blah, blah, blah. The usual thing, you know the drill. Statements were said by one side, the other side clapped back, and the clapping back is continuing back and forth, over and over. Only, it's not really that simple. And it's this absence of the usual simplicity that got me interested in it. Because the absolute vitriol being pushed by the people who initially started pointing fingers and saying, hey, these, these two statements you made are proof that you're a terrible person, has gone so much further and been so much more intense than it normally would be for statements this mild that it really had me wondering why. Why this big? Why this much intensity? Why such an explosion of pure rage at these two tiny statements? And I want to clarify one other thing too. It wasn't just these two tiny statements. There was a third statement that I believe it was Junior who made the statement, but it could have actually just been whoever is in charge of the TSR account. I'm not 100% sure on this, but from what I've heard, it was Junior himself. And that statement was to call somebody who was saying awful things to him a disgusting individual. A perfectly reasonable thing to say back to somebody who's trying to say awful things about you. But unfortunately, at least from what I understand, it turns out that the person who said this to him was trans. And so now his statement of you being a disgusting individual for what this person told him is being taken out of context to paint him as anti-trans. So long story short, the guns are out in force against Junior and TSR, and the guns are also out in force for them. It is seriously blown up so far beyond the proportion that it needs to be. The entire thing is blown up way out of proportion, and naturally, 
TSR is eating this up. I mean, it's only helping them. It's creating the Streisand effect. Hell, I'm talking about it. I had no interest in talking about the revival of TSR because I recognized what it was from the get-go. When I heard TSR was coming back, my initial assumption was that, okay, you know, Wizards is bringing TSR back. Then I come to find out, oh no, it's coming back as its own individual company. It's coming back under the name of a Gygax. And look into it a little more. Okay, yeah, they're basically looking to package and sell us nostalgia. No thank you, not really interested. I'll pass unless it turns out that the products you're providing me are particularly good. By the way, I want to stress, do not buy from the new TSR just because they're clapping against the woke. Don't buy from them just because their Twitter handle happened to say, we don't care what you have to say, you're not our customer base. While that is laudable, make sure the products are at least worth your while first before you give them money. But going back on track, now you have, at least in a general sense, the context of what's going on. Gygax Jr. went on to an interview, he said a couple of clumsy things, whether they were by accident or whether they were thought out, I don't really know. To me, it just sounds like a clumsy comparison that he made off the top of his head, but who knows, he could have been thinking about doing this knowing that it was going to stir up controversy. I don't know enough about the guy and the way he tends to act or the way he tends to do business myself to make a statement. I know there's a lot of people who believe that he did say this on purpose, hoping to drum up controversy, but I mean, for me, from what I heard and what I saw, it could really go either way, and I'm not going to make a judgment on it, because frankly, I don't care. What I'm more interested in is the reason why the reaction to his statements was so intense and continues to be and grow more intense. Why is it that the people that don't like him and don't like TSR, who don't like old school gaming, are so very much against this? Why are they blowing up so fiercely against this? Well, I honestly can really only think of one reason. They're scared of TSR coming back. TSR has been gone for a long time, but it's still a name that carries a lot of weight and a lot of recognition within this hobby. People who've been in the hobby for a long time, like myself, and mind you, I joined after TSR was already defunct. I joined in the early days of third edition when Wizards of the Coast already owned Dungeons and Dragons. TSR was basically gone by then. I didn't even know what TSR was until quite a few years after that fact. But even people like me who came into the game later, who came into the game after TSR was basically over and done with, we still learned and came to know what TSR was, what it meant, who was behind it, and why it was so important to this hobby. Hell, it was arguably the name that birthed this entire genre of gaming. So yeah, naturally the TSR name carries a lot of weight. Naturally, they're going to use it because it has recognition, it has clout, it's going to draw eyes. Like I said, to me, it seems pretty obvious they're using it to try and sell nostalgia. Junior is attaching his name to it for the same reason. He wants to sell nostalgia. I mean, if what I heard was true, if it really is true that before this, he never used to call himself Gary Gygax Jr., then I also think it's pretty fucking obvious the reason he now calls himself Gary Gygax Jr. is so that you hear the name Gary Gygax tied with TSR. It's, it's a nostalgia trigger. It's a built-in nostalgia trigger. It is a business move meant to get people interested. And the people who are against this the people who hate old school gaming, the people who don't want to see this sort of thing happen because it threatens the position they think they have within this hobby, it threatens the power they think they have within this hobby, they're terrified of this. These kind of reactions do not happen when you are confident in the position that you hold, when you are confident that your beliefs are honest and genuine, when you are confident that you can convince people of your correctness. No, these are the actions of people who are scared, of people who are not confident, of people who do not believe they can convince others of the rightness of their stances and their ideas, because by and large, they can't. They can't. They can't stand by their ideas because their ideas are nonsense. They can't, by and large, stand behind the kinds of claims they're making because the claims are nonsense. 
and the vitriol, the absolute over-the-top vitriol with which they are attacking the return of TSR, or rather, I should say, the reacquisition of TSR. TSR has been around, it's just been reacquired by a Gygax again. And now the attaching of the Gary Gygax name back to it, even though it's through Gary Gygax's son, well, it represents, like I said, a threat to the perceived power and position that they hold within this hobby. This shows them, particularly since the Twitter handle for the TSR label has showed a willingness to say, yeah, we don't care what you think. You're not our customer base. You were never going to buy from us anyway, so we're not listening to you. We'll see how long that continues to last. I'm actually very curious to see if they continue to stand by that position or if they eventually cave. But at least for now, their willingness to say that shows that for all the screaming, for all the shouting, for all the finger pointing, yelling, name calling, all of that, TSR doesn't care. Junior doesn't care. The people attached to this revival, they don't care. They know what their market is. And by pushing against these people, they're playing to that market. That's why they have so many other people coming to bat for them. Now, I myself, again, not particularly interested right now in what I've seen them offering. Really, I haven't seen a whole lot. It seems pretty bare bones to me. All I've really seen so far is, hey, the name TSR is back, and it's got Gary Gygax Jr. attached to it. Well, that doesn't tell me much of anything. And I would caution those that are interested in this because of the fact that, ooh, TSR and Gygax Jr. are being based. I'm totally going to give them my money. Don't. Don't give them your money just because they're acting based, bro. That's no better than what the woke do by throwing money at people that try to play to them. Which, well, let's be fair, by and large, the woke don't do that. But don't throw your money at something just because it acts based. At least wait and see if it provides a worthwhile product for you first. And that's the long and short of it. That's pretty much, at least as I understand it, the encapsulated controversy surrounding Gary Gygax Jr. and TSR's revival. A couple of fairly innocuous, if clumsy, statements blown far out of proportion by a group of people that absolutely hate the fact that a property that is old school, a property that is not interested in catering to them, that is not interested in playing their games, at least from what we can see right now, is coming back is going to be selling nostalgia to other people who hate what they're doing and don't like what they're providing and think that they're just absolute idiots. And to be frank, it's also probably a bunch of people who are going to be taken in by the nostalgia bait that I personally think the return of TSR is going to end up being. But we'll see if I'm right in that in the future. We'll see if they come up with anything worthwhile, if the products that they're going to be providing are going to be worth our time. For now, though, friends and gamers of all stripes, I would like to know your thoughts. Have you seen any other aspects of this entire TSR controversy going on? What have you noticed? Uh, is there maybe something that I missed here? Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. While you're down there, I would really appreciate it if you open up that description box to follow me on my social media presences. Minds.com in particular is the best place to follow me since, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I back up all of my content over there. You could also follow me on Gab and Instagram, although to be fair, my Instagram is largely dead. I tend not to use that very much. Beyond that, Phoenix Rising is nearing its three year anniversary, so I would really appreciate it if you would hop on over to Webtoons, give a read to Phoenix Rising. Next month, it will hit its three year posting anniversary. We will be posting another summer special to celebrate that fact, and then we'll be back in August continuing the main story as normal. So I'd really appreciate it if you hop over to Webtoons, give a read to Phoenix Rising. And with that, now said and done, friends and gamers of all stripes, once again, my name is GM Dave. I am your man behind the screen, and I would like to remind you that in the world of tabletop gaming, you do not want to just sit back and watch, but get in there and game. Have a good one.